Hello folks, we are doing a timing belt, water pump, uh, let's see, brake job, starter, thermostat, oil change uh, on this 2009 Subaru Legacy that I've just purchased a couple weeks ago. This will be my winter car because uh, I'll park the summer car in November. And so we, as you can see, we've already started. Uh, so first things first is drain the coolant out of the radiator and the engine. So that's well underway. I saw on the internet that it was easier to simply pull the hose off of the thermostat housing. I hope you can see this way up there uh, as opposed to using the drain plug uh, because sometimes uh, the drain plug, I'm not sure if it rusts out or... Uh, if it gets corroded or something, but I was told it could be problematic to put it back on. So, uh, we pulled this hose off. It's draining into the bucket. I'm not reusing this coolant. I've got some fresh one. Uh, and that's about it for now. So, once this is done draining, we will lower the car. And then, we go up top here. We're going to take off this uh, air intake. Uh, housing here and uh, remove the uh, entire radiator along with the overflow tank on the side right here. Uh, so all we really had to do is unplug the power connectors to the fans uh, that are mounted to the radiator and so is the overflow tank. So then all we'll have to do is take off these uh, brackets over here. There's another one over here uh, and then we'll disconnect the top radiator hose uh, and then we should be able to pull that out. Um, so in a, in a single assembly, we should make that much easier. And will give us lots of room to replace timing belt, water pump, and what have you. got this room to work. I just had to double check underneath to see if it was fastened anywhere. But this is what we're looking at. So now next step is to remove the belts uh, over here. So let me just put this here. So here we've got AC compressor. The trick to removing those is to slack this nut down here uh, for that tensioner pulley and then there's a nut right back here uh, that will actually release the uh, tension and bring that uh, that wheel back up so then we'll be able to take that pulley off but not before we take down the alternator so this one is just a question of slacking this bolt to the right and this one to the left of the alternator and this is your adjuster bolt so then you slack this one off and the alternator will come down so that you can remove the belt. So that's what we're going to do right now. Maybe I can clip this here. There you go. I think that would give you a decent view of this. Thing at a time. Let's start with the alternator. This is 12 now, by the way. So it was rather easy because I just replaced the alternator on it. It died quite literally two days after I bought the car. I went to the scrapyard, got another one, tested it. I'm not exactly sure how to test an alternator uh, with a multimeter, but I had a 
drill with a socket on the pulley to make it spin. And then we uh, grounded it and put the positive contact here. It was making a bit of uh, a voltage, um, but it wasn't very much. It's not the 14 point some volts I was expecting. Uh, there's something about the, uh, I believe it's the, uh, the regulator that needs to have a 12 volt, which is the connection you got back here. Um, but in any event, I tested two or three of them at the scrap yard. This one had the smoothest bearing and uh, the highest uh, power output that we read on the multimeter. And sure enough, all the 20 minutes to replace this thing and uh, we're getting proper power, uh, the expected 14 volts out of that alternator. There goes, that comes down. Should come down with it. about it. Yeah, a bit more will do. is off and marked and marked what length was it i'm curious 825 uh, no, no. Uh, eight, 875 and the other one is an 845 keep that in mind when we reassemble Okay, so we'll slack off this one down here. Hang on. Get you, oops. Get you a better vantage point. Um, where at? Maybe this guy. So that should be good. So slack off that nut at the bottom, which is the sockets on backwards. Like so, and then we'll take that adjuster bolt and slack it off so that we make the wheel move up. The pulley, I should say. Because we're going into this housing here, uh, I'm going to remove the bracket uh, for the uh, tensioner here. So far, pretty much all 12s. China. Japan. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you go. One. I think we're going to 
We're going to keep those together, make sure we don't mix up our bolts. the scary part of this job taking off the crank pulley so to access this housing uh, or to, to remove the timing belt housing rather uh, we need to take off uh, the crank pulley I've seen some people online take it off uh, by putting a breaker bar with a socket they put the socket onto the, uh, the bolt here and then they brace the uh, breaker bar onto the body uh, inside here uh, so that it rests there and then they crank the engine over uh, couldn't help but cringe when I saw that uh, I think that's a little too scary for my liking anyway I did not want to strip a bolt so I bought the actual tool which uh, is essentially a long wrench uh, that you can put the socket through it but it will bolt uh, into these holes that way you can hold the pulley while you slack off the bolt I understand it's supposed to be about 130 foot pounds of pressure on that one this is the tool in question so it came with uh, an adapter to do different uh, subaru vehicles or different engines uh, and so essentially this is going to come up like so and bolt it on here so that we can put a breaker bar and a socket onto the nut and slack it off without risking stripping that uh, that bolt Ready, so now then. I'm gonna go, yeah, backwards. So yeah, that's it. You're you pulling need to go that, that way. way. I'm pulling this way. That's it. Like so. Those. <laughs> <You> nervous? <laughs> those, those a couple hundred pounds for sure. <laughs> <laughs> almost this is 130. Almost lifted me up on the car. Seized. Good news. I was worried about that. <laughs> there she be. That comes out. It's gonna take some loving too. There you go. And it's out. Oops. There's a bit of crap in there. And as you can see, this is keyed. There's only one way to put it on, so you can't really go wrong. So we'll put this away. All right, this is it. Uh, but we are going to need to put it back on loosely so that we can turn the engine and then get the okay. marks at the right spot. Just the bolt? Uh, either just the bolt or the, the pulley. I guess just the bolt would be enough. It's just that if we get okay. too tight, then we don't have anything to grab on to slack get that tight. You don't think so? No, no, we, I did. Even on did, compression? I did a couple already, yeah. We're never going to get that tight. Okay. You've been there, you've done it, sure. Been there, done that. <laughs> Didn't care for the t shirt. Okay, so some 12. Now there are a number of them. I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven at the top, one at the end, and then I'll go fishing for the ones underneath. So.
Okay, so what we have here is the covers removed. Uh, we plugged the um, coolant uh, inlets and outlets uh, because we want to blow air uh, in here just to clean it up. And now my dad is trying to put the bolt back on with a bunch of spacers so that we can actually turn the crank over uh, and line up these marks, which you can see on the cams over here. Uh, and they need to line up in here. Uh, so we will assess this in just a minute. Okay, so what we've done now is we've turned the crank. Hope this is good. Uh, let me just put some light here. So you'll see how we had to turn the crank and line up those notches. We've put the markings on the belt uh, because I guess there may have been markings before, but they're gone. So you see how it uh, lines up that back notch on the sprocket to the notch right above it. So that's where you're supposed to line this up. And then if you look over the left cam, that notch lines up with a, it's kind of a line in the aluminum of the, of the block, or of the head rather. This, there is a, line here kind of a separation that's what you line up to so you got this one here and then you go over to the driver's side and this is where there's various markings but the one we're interested in is the the uh, engraved marking here to line up with this notch right up there so we've marked the belt in case we do have to to reverse uh, the whole procedure uh, we thought it'd be a good idea just in case. So what we're going to do now is remove this idler pulley down here. 14 mil bolts for this one. Uh, this idler and the toothed idler down here. Uh, but to remove the belt, we're going to take off this one first, which will remove some of the tension. And then because we have a new uh, tensioner we're going to remove this one here so just just a question of taking that bolt off and then we'll get okay so we got the belt off so that first pulley is off tensioner that was right here is also off and we pulled the belt off of it now the question i have is was this ever done before or was it still the original and here's why if I go over here, something tells me it was replaced because the condition of the belt is really, really good. Uh, and here's why I'm asking the question here. Subaru, uh, this is a belt from Subaru. So either the previous owner had the timing belt done by Subaru or in the less likely scenario, it was never done. Um, if you look at the top of the belt, you can see some cracking see all along here so I'm really glad I bought this kit and decided to do the timing belt because God knows when it would have went the car has 223,000 kilometers so I guess that's roughly what 140 miles 140,000 miles in any event um, also a thing I noticed is this bearing right here that idler that i just pulled off now let me just use my two hands uh finding somewhere to clip you right here should do so if i grab this you hear that that bearing is kind of noisy so uh, my kit includes uh, the two uh, idlers and the toothed idler so we're definitely replacing those since we have the whole thing out. Uh, and then once I remove the other pulleys, I'm going to attack the water pump right down here. So I got to remove that cover. There's, uh, there seems to be two bolts for the thermostat housing. So I'm going to remove that, take the thermostat out. Yes, I'm going to make a mess because the rest of the coolant in the engine is going to drain. Uh, and then once I've got that out, uh, then I'll uh, replace the, uh, the water pump.
uh, itself because I have a new one in my kit. By the way, the kit I got, I believe, is the, uh, what's it called again? Great Gates. This is the kit I got. I buy most of my parts uh, on rockauto.com. Uh, even though I'm in Canada, uh, the parts with shipping is usually a lot cheaper uh, than what I could get locally. Um, so we've got the brand new water pump over here. Uh, the tensioner has disappeared. Oh, it's right here. See the grenade pin here? Do not pull until later <laughs> once it's installed because that'll make our lives uh, a lot easier. And if we remove it, it'll be a pain. Also comes with a bleeding procedure for the piston. They claim that there could be air in the piston. So there's a bleeding procedure before you install. Before you install, before you pull the pin? No, you actually got to pull the pin, let it extend out, and then bleed it back in. According to this. All right, well, we're going to read that in further detail. Haven't done that. And in figured the last it out. Time <laughs> That's it. And so. This also comes with the kit, and I wanted to show you this. There is, over top of the uh, crank here, there's a little, kind of a, a cover uh, that goes over this uh, sprocket and belt. And uh, I read that you really have to get the right gap in it. So I'm happy that my kit came with this tool where once I have the belt put on with all the pulleys, uh, before I release the tensioner, I can put this over top of the belt and then reinstall uh, that cover and it'll ensure that it's got proper gap between the cover and the belt so uh, we're going to examine examine this water pump uh, situation uh, after i remove this tooth pulley oh i can hear that one too it's a it's got a wee bit of play in it oh this one's very noisy <laughs> yeah oh this yes. This whole car is going to feel like a new one when I'm done with it. That might be the original. It's, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. So, much progress. Uh, so we took off all of the idlers. And then we removed the uh, housing for the thermostat. And then removed the uh, water pump itself. Um, so it had two nuts that were a little bit harder to get to. This bottom one was... Yeah, it was easy enough, uh, but nevertheless, um, this one was kind of hard to get to. I don't know if you can see it down here. This guy uh, was a little bit harder to get to. You're kind of doing it blind, uh, but it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, this hose was still connected to the pump uh, as well, so we just disconnected that. And uh, that's it. The gasket kind of stayed on there. We're going to have to clean this up and make sure that we get a nice seal uh, with the new gasket. And yeah, and then we'll be ready to start reassembling. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to find a spot for you guys while I do that so that I can time lapse or something, but I'll do what I can. Now we just read all of the instructions for this kit. And what they say is that uh, you have to bleed uh, this piston, and it's very important that it's done vertically, apparently. And so they suggest to use a C-clamp or a vise. Uh, it's kind of hard to use a vise while it's a vertical. And you have to make it do a couple of cycles. So you let it expand out, so we had to pull the pin, which is right here. And uh, now we have to compress it slowly, uh, which should take about a minute according to the, to the instructions. Um, and so we push it all the way back in and then we release it. It says to do so about three times. Uh, and then after that, uh, the, uh, we recompress it and put the pin back in so that we can install the tensioner. They've also provided Loctite to put on the bolt uh, for this tensioner. And so I'm going to finish doing this. All right, after much studying and preparing, uh, this water pump is now back on with a fresh thermostat. Um, we just put the thermostat housing back on. We checked the service manual and it says that these bolts here, there is a specific pattern to torque them in and they should be at 8.7 foot-pounds. So that roughly translates to 100 inch-pounds. 
and uh, so these are torqued down uh, we reinstalled the hose down here and so this water pump is good to go now wiggle pin up uh, I'm sorry wiggle pin up yes wiggle pin up important detail that we found out in the service manual the thermostat has a wiggle pin which we thought was to go at the bottom when you put it in there's, there's only two ways that you can put the thermostat into its housing um, and so it's either with the jiggle pin up or down and so we had put it in down and then checked the torque spec in the service manual only to be told that that jiggle pin goes at the top so we took the housing back off flipped the thermostat put it back on and then uh, torqued these nuts because these ones also uh, go to 8.7 foot pounds so there you have it we're gonna start reassembling putting the pulleys on uh, the pulleys the tensioner uh, they all take 29 uh, foot-pounds of torque so we're gonna set our torque wrench for that we're still in line everywhere at the cams and at the crank so uh, timing will be good and then we will I guess uh, before putting the tensioner back in there uh, or the new one rather we'll, uh, we'll slap the belt on and then go from there so we managed to get the pulleys on all oh, like I said earlier 29 foot pounds um, there's one left at the bottom because that's the trick to do this somewhat easily um, so we've got as you can see clamps uh, we saw a video on YouTube of somebody who did the same thing so we're on the mark here if you remove it there's a mark over there uh, over here this lines up to the mark at the back of the sprocket and over here is where it kind of lines up. It's like impossible to line it up precisely because that marking is on the tooth. Um, and so is the marking on the cam. So there's no way to align them perfectly. However, I am still directly in line with the marking on the, uh, on the head itself. So now all we have to do in theory is to, oh yes, I use this here to uh, the, the top uh, belt bracket here uh, to hold it in place so I wouldn't lose uh, the timing on the on the crank so now in theory what we have to do now is to put that oh, I'll bring it down here pulley last idler pulley under there and because it's the easiest way to do it we had a hard time putting the belt uh, because we started over here we went around to the left uh, cam and then down here to this toothed idler and the water pump, this was really hard. Um, so we had to remove the tensioner uh, and then that gave us a bit of slack. So we could turn the uh, cam on the driver's side here uh, to give us a bit of slack to actually fit it uh, over here while keeping the clamp here. So that way we don't lose the, uh, the timing on the cam. And so once the belt was on, we turned the cam back to uh, its proper uh, timing marks and we were able to reinstall the tensioner. And so now we're all in one piece, uh, or practically, uh, short of that last uh, idler bearing down here. And then we are going to remove this little bracket here uh, so that I can put the shim tool uh, to make sure we got proper spacing between the belt and that bracket uh, and then uh, torque those bolts down we're reassembled everything is good we took the clamps off and then we spun the crank uh, a couple of times uh, oh yes all this before we we uh, we pulled the pin first before we started to crank so then we turned uh, about uh, two revolutions of the crank and as you can see we're still in line here with the marking over there the lines on the belt are not going to line up that's expected uh, but we did see the notch which is really 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 hard to see back there on the sprocket and the notch uh, on the other side uh, at this cam right here is also in line like it should be so we're going to take the nut off uh, of the uh, crank sprocket here we're going to put the covers back on uh, and then we can reinstall the crank pulley and I mean installation is pretty much going to be reversed of what we just did 
Um, so I think uh, next video is going to be either the oil change, which really doesn't really need a video, but uh, oil change and then we'll move on to brakes. So that was essentially it for the timing belt job. We had to refill the radiator, the overflow tank, and then go through the uh, procedure to uh, ensure that there were no air bubbles in the cooling system. Uh, and then all was well. Uh, I, we ended up doing the brakes, uh, which I didn't film, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I may still make a video on at least the rear brakes because I do have a bit of noise on the rear driver wheel. Um, so that uh, is gonna involve uh, releasing the parking brake uh, adjuster so that we can remove the disc and so more fun to come essentially uh, and on that I will thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next video